You are about to embark on a journey into Schrodinger's Hat, a place where science fact coexists with science fiction, a place where everything you see and hear is simultaneously real and completely made up. So settle down, relax, and enjoy your time in the capable hands of the Free Radicals! for the opportunity. It's, it's really fantastic. I'm, I'm really passionate about plants. and Basically, I gardened so much as a kid with my parents uh, back down in France that we developed a green thumb. I just love observing nature. Right? Just so much to see, so much to learn. I think it's really a human thing, right? We all have this innate curiosity. Why is it like this? Why is it like that? And, uh, and so I chose plants because of a huge diversity. Right? You look around you, and it's been millennia. Plant humans have been asking themselves, for example, why do these leaves of this tree have this shape? And how does that work? Or why do the leaves change color in the fall? Process. You can see it from space, actually, in Canada. You can see when September and October comes. It's a process, it's a biological phenomenon that you can see from space. From space. Um, and how does that work as well? But scientists just can't help it. They really want to understand how to explain explain how does it work at the molecular level, at the cellular level, at the genetic level, and now we're we're lucky to, to live in the 21st century and we we get a, a grasp of these molecules, of these genes, and it's incredible time. How come we live now, 21st century, and there's so many centuries before we had no clue, we just observed it. But it's like almost art. God created that. So. Or like some plants are the shape of a snake, so we thought it was like wicked. You know, it's pagan, it's amazing. And so I want to tell a story tonight around uh, something I worked on during my, my PhD, so that was like 10 years ago. And um, it's about plants and light. So plants have this unique. Uh, property is that it's able to capture the energy, the physical energy of the photons of light from the sun and to convert this physical energy into chemical energy. And this chemical energy is used by the cells to grow and reproduce. And you know this process is called photosynthesis. And in the past couple of years, it turns out scientists have deepened their knowledge so much about this, this mechanism that it's going to be the future of solar panels in the world. They're trying to reproduce photosynthesis into real solar panels. And that could be an energy revolution. And because plants need light, grow, the thing about it is that it's a very predictable thing, right? Your food is very predictable. Every morning, the sun rises, you know, it tracks the sky, your plants, you get the energy. Of course, you have the occasional cloud cover and the seasons, but the energy is above your head, so you don't really need to move to get your energy. Because you don't need to move, scientists think that that's why plants are sedentary, have sedentary lifestyles. But that sessile, they just like down there, and then they just get the energy. And that's very different from animals. If you think about animals, they consume their energy somewhere, and then they have to go somewhere else to get some more energy. So they have to move. Not only that, 
they have to sometimes chase other animals and then escape from their prey. So plants and animals, just because of the nature of their food, have developed very different lifestyles. One moves and the other one doesn't move. And so this sedentary lifestyle doesn't come without risks, right? Imagine you're stuck in the same place and you still get eaten up by, by people and by animals and maybe other plants go and compete for your sun rays that you need to grow. And so plants have developed the sense of who thinks that plants can see Any color of the rainbow. Yes. <laughs> what? Great. Yes. You think so? Sure. Oh yeah. You think you think you think I say yes. Yeah. <laughs> do you think? Do you think well, plants? No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> You're on it. <laughs> do you think plants can see more colors than we do? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Great. That's only one out of Great. Okay. Perfect. Well, it turns out that plants, because they can't move, they need to track their environment all the time. So let's think about it. I'd like to tell you two quick stories. One is around blue lights. So imagine you're a seed, and then you lay out next to a rock, for example, or next to a piece of wood. Germinates. And then once your leaves are out there, you need a sun ring, right? Where is the sun? Let's look for the blue sky. The blue sky, you need some blue color. Well, it turns out that plants have the ability to see blue light. They have blue light sensors, which are molecules like we have in our eyes. And as soon as they can, they're going to track where is the sky, where is the sky? and they're going to bend their stem away from the rock, away from the piece of wood, and then open the leaves so that they can maximize their capture of light. That's actually a, a phenomenon called phototropism that Darwin uh, was one of the first ones to study and admitted some amazing hypotheses about how it works. Because there's the why, there's also the, the how, right? And Darwin thought, Oh, maybe plants have light sensors. Who was right? Maybe plants can sense light on one side of their stem and then send a signal on the other side of the stem where the cells are going to grow. And if you grow more on this side compared to this side, what's going to happen? You're going to bend, right? You're going to bend. And that's actually exactly what happens. I mean, Darwin didn't really have a microscope or like advanced tools to look at the, the molecules, but he imagined he did a hypothesis, and then a hundred years later, boom, that's the way it works. The main did so many things. The second light is, imagine this time you're plants, and you grow under the canopy of other plants, right? So you're competing against other plants. To the plant, but it turns out that you might not be that much taller than you, maybe right there, but you can sense it, right? So what happens is that when the sun rays, which are what, what color are sun rays like? The mixture is white, right? It's a mixture of all kinds of colors. The rainbow is just a diffraction of the white of the sun in different color types. Well, when the white sun rays of the sun come down from the leaves, the sun rays are filtered by the green of the leaves. And what color goes through? Well, it turns out it's filtered through and there's only mainly a color called deep red. Deep red is filtered through the leaves of the neighboring plants. Plants can see that deep red. We can't see it. It's amazing, isn't it? But they can see colors that we can't. And they need to see 
see that color because they need to compete with their buddies next door, right? It's like, I got this guy there. He's competing for my resources, for my lights. Like, I need to see if he's around. And plants have evolved this ability to see that deep red light which is filtered through the leaf of another guy. So when that happens, they have another eye, they have another receptor that senses not blue light, but deep red light. And this sensor will transmit a signal to the stem again, but this time he's going to try to shoot right up to try to overtake his neighbor. So that he'll be the one getting these sun rays that are so important for his, uh, his energy and his growth. So that's, that's, that's pretty amazing when you think about it. So you have blue light, you have hard lights, and you know how it works in science? This is, everything I'm telling you is research from the past maybe 50 years. And the scientists, they're making all this progress. They're finding these molecules, they're finding these genes, they're finding this, this signal, they're finding the receptors. And now they're able to put the story together and make we call the model of the science, where the model is super, super helpful because it allows you to predict what's going to happen in the environment once you understand all the moving parts of your system, your plants. So now you can start picturing your plants, you're in the canopy, I need to go get the blue light because that's where the sky is, that's where the energy is. Oh no, shit, is my neighbor, is my competitor here. I'm going to move away from him. I'm going to overtake him and try to put my leaves above him. The bench was the sky. So, that's, that's, I think it's incredible. You know, like plants, they look, they scan their environment every single second of their life. And they integrate all this information to such an extent that some people say that plants are intelligent and normal. And they really are. They, they have all the abilities of an intelligent organism. They can sense their environment. They can respond to their environment. And they can learn from us. If they're experiencing one thing once, the next thing that happens, the next time it happens, they'll respond much faster. Much better. So, we are intelligent, intelligent beings. So, to finish, I just want to invite you to think so, this is all amazing, right? I mean, this is contemplative science to describe all in detail. How can you apply that to society, right? To the benefits of society? Well, there's, there's many different ways. I want to tell you one, one example. And it's, it's about evolution. And evolution is such a hard thing to understand. It's so abstract. It's like, do you guys get it? Do you guys get evolution? On to the man, Christopher. Yes, I would be always telling you that. I've seen Pokemon. So imagine you have a, a Pokemon you know, that is a good friend of your father. Like 50,000 years ago, right? 50,000 years ago, you got your farmer and your Pokemon and say, Guys, I don't want to run after my, 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 my fields of my herds of animals anymore. I want to be sedentary. And that's when agriculture started about 15,000 years ago in different parts of the world. And humans, they went out into the, into the wild and they got the seeds and they sowed the seeds into their plot of land. But They wanted to sow their seeds at pretty high density, right? Because they want to harvest their crops in high amounts, in the same spots. But that's not very natural. Maybe these poor little plants, they were like more scattered around the environment, in the natural environment. And now they're suddenly all crammed up against each other. That's not really that. So they got to freak out, the poor plants. It's like, hey, they're like, like the same plants, but all right, this all grow together. Oh, and then it's like, what are you doing here so close to me? So they are investing all their energy in trying to overtake each other, and that's exhausting for them. And if it's exhausting for them, they're not going to be putting their energy in the seeds, and the farmer is not going to be happy because 
He's doing that just to get the seeds, right? <coughs> and so, through domestication of these plants over millennia, it turns out that the farmers have selected which kind of plants would the farmers select? The ones that grow together. Sorry? Ones that grow close together. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And, and what else? Yeah, exactly. So, what does it need to have difference in order to do that? Yeah, exactly. So, exactly. So, over millennia, the farmers have selected, without realizing it, they just took the plants that had more seeds. He selected the plants that don't see as well anymore, because they're the ones who are not as claustrophobic, who don't freak out as much. And so, they don't grow like crazy. They say, I'm cool, I'm chill. I'm just going to grow here next to my buddy, and then I'm just going to put my energy in there, and then these are the ones that get more seeds, and then that's the lucky one selected by the farmer. And so over like millennia now, scientists have looked at these crop varieties and said, like, oh, they don't look, they don't see very really well. They lost their sight. And now, since we're in 2020, we have these genetic technologies where we know the genes, we know the molecules that sense light, let's just make them. What happens when you make the plant blind? And so scientists were able to make blind plants. Anyways, they made plants that were like well, half blind almost through evolution, through domestication. And it turns out, because they know the gene and that technology, they made the plants blind. They sowed them into the fields and they all grew together so sweetly side by side into the fields. And then they had enormous yields. And so that's an incredible application of observe nature, how do they respond to light, and boom, you just apply it to people to act on it. And that's happening as we see it. So, yeah, I hope it, it gives you a, a good idea of the secret life of plants, and these, I hope you realize how much you can see, how much they have to sense their environment, and I hope it gives you inspiration for the rest of the show.
grow a sunflower. Let's take a look and see what the scientist plant looks like. <laughs> Very impressive. <laughs> now the pagans. It's a big plant. <laughs> Put it in a pot. I wonder if the scientist is from his brain. No. <laughs> so this is another episode of the Big Vegan Club. The garden is so beautiful. Look at our sunflowers. Oh, it's amazing. It is. From these green thumbs, we have. We have You've got four. six green thumbs. No <laughs> <laughs> wonder you're so good at gardening! <laughs> it is a shameful secret. It is true. Oh, Monsieur Fairhand. Tell me. How did you get such great thumbs? It was by evolution. My my father had five green thumbs. That's one less than you! I know. And I was selected. And then I had six green thumbs! How, how did they grow the extra one? What did they use? There must have been a mutation. Whose? That's not good enough. <laughs> I need to know whose. It must have happened when I was in my mother's womb as I was growing protected. The gestation period must have caused a mutation to have occurred. <laughs> oh shit! <laughs> Why this leaf turns brown? 
an emergency. Yeah. Well, what is it then? I needed you to bring that. What, the canopies? Yes. Yeah. Brilliant. I can't live without canopies. There you go. Oh. No, they take all of them. I mean, yes. I mean canopies. Is that a vegetarian canopy? No. No. Sorry. Oh. No. Yeah, it's like, why is it happening? It's happening. Yeah, it's like, oh, 
Okay. Well, yeah, that uh, hip shot, you do. So, you want some sake back to what you tell me? I'll give you a back to what you tell Once, 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 once you can get me a back to what you tell That's something different. What is that? Well, that was a very magical time that I was talking about. It was, it was at University Exploring. Exploring what? Me? <laughs> what did you find out? I found out a lot of things. <laughs> okay, I'll go into detail what I found. <laughs> I, I found out that, you know, um, oh, okay, sure. So, um, I found out that, um, that men, you know, men don't express the feelings much, but we are like punched up. I punched a baboon. Welcome <laughs> back to you, so you think you can plant. Yes. Not much has changed. <laughs> I grew mine! <laughs> uh, I grew a human! You're growing a sunflower! Yes, a sun! Uh. <laughs> <laughs> we think there's a problem. We don't think your six green thumbs are natural. Oh mon dieu! What do you mean? Oh, Chateau Neuf du Pas! Exactly what he said! Oh, oh, Nine Chateaus du Pas! Ah, j'ai joué le foot! Ah, um, où est le père? Il n'y a pas de naturel! Oh no! Oh, merci beaucoup! J'ai joué un BD! Uh, <laughs> I'm going to It is true, my family are descended from plants. We grew from seeds. Oh, Sacre-Bleu. That is us. We are the, the, the family of the Sacre-Bleu. Oh, oh, man. Merci beaucoup. God, I wish I had friends. <laughs>